All right, so now one of the last uh, operations we need to do or functions we need to add to our project is to set um, a task to complete by clicking on this button here. So I gotta come here, uh, I'll come down here and let's create an asynchronous R function that we're gonna call, uh, I'll say set to complete just to be trying, just to try and make the function descriptive. So set to complete. And when you want to set a task to complete, when you click on this button, right, the first thing is you want to have information about that task because you want to know the task you're setting to complete. So I would make, give this uh, function here a parameter of task. Sorry, not plural, but singular task. And then what I will do is I would just do a console.log. Is there any need? I think we've gone past this stage of actually you know logging things and let's just go straight to the point so here i would create a new variable i'll say new form data form data yeah and that's going to be an object now this object is going to have remember a task has two properties a name and completed uh, property so here i'm going to set the name to task dot name so task dot name i'll add a comma and then i'll set the completed property so here we're going to say completed and here we simply want to set it to true so true remember we are using the uh put method here that's what we are using to update the task so essentially we are just updating the task except that we are only changing the completed status to true okay so now we've created a new form data let's come down i'll come down here and i'll now add a try catch block so here i'll say try catch and in my try uh, catch block i want to do axios so you want to await so because it's an asynchronous function so i want to await axios dot put so i'm using the put method and here uh, we're going to specify the uh, task we want to update. So let's just grab the URL. And that's going to be this one. Okay, it ends here. So I'll just copy that. And then I'll just paste that in here. So axios.put. And then this is the URL I want to update. Except that um, the I'll specify the task ID here. And that's going to be task dots so here we're gonna say task dots underscore id because remember in our database the task in our database the id is saved as underscore id all right then the next arguments we're going to pass here is the data we want to update the task with and that is this one here new form data so we are not changing the task name we're only changing the completed status to true so here i'll just pass my new form data like so all right so when i do that i also want to refresh the page by calling the get tasks function so i'll call that and if there's an error i would simply just toast the error so toast dot error and here i'm just going to say error dot message okay m e s s e g e like so great so uh technically this should be the function to set our tasks to complete but this function can only be fired when you click on this button so we need to pass this set to complete function as a prop to our task.js so let's come down here um at the bottom that's where we have our task.js so i'll come here and pass the prop that's going to be equal to set to complete and then i'll go to my task.js and catch this prop so i'll come here and first off, let's catch the prop here at the top. I'll add a comma and then set to complete. Great. So where's our check? So this is our check double button. So we're gonna come here and add an on click on this button. And essentially, let's just use our arrow function because we're gonna pass the task. So set to complete, and we're going to send the task to that function. So this is going to be an argument here, task. Great. I'll go ahead and save. And I would like to refresh the page. So let me refresh the page. 
Aha, so now let's test this first one. Oh, there's something we need to do before we test. When you set a task to complete, there's something we want to do. We want to make the border of that task change to green. So how are we going to do that? Well, in this task component, you remember we started by giving it a div with a class name of task. Well, I'm going to make this class name dynamic. So what I'm going to do is I'll just delete all these guys you see here and open curly braces. And I'll say that if the task dot completed, oh, sorry, not set to complete, tax dot completed is equal to true, then I want the class name to be, first I'll give it the task class, then I'll also give it another class of completed, which is what one of the classes we've created in our CSS file else i'll just give it a class of task so you see what we just did here essentially we say look inside the task if the property of task dot completed is equal to true then give it these two classes else just give it a class of task so now we are good to go to test our functionality to see whether it's completed or not so i would refresh the page first and then i'll test it out aha so let's test the first one. I'll click on it. Aha. So you see, it does work. Now this is set to green. I'll check the uh, last one here. Aha. So it does work. Now let's see if we try and edit this task. Let's see if it will be set. The completed status will be set back to four. So I'll just edit the last one. Okay. And I'll make it task three. And then I'll click on edit. And you see the completed state has been set back to false. So technically, we're done with the CRUD functionality from the front end of our application. The next thing we're going to do is to set this total task and completed task number. In the next video, we'll do that. Alright, so now let's add the counts for the task and the completed task. So technically, we have a total of three tasks, but the completed task is just one. So how are we going to add that count? So I'll come here um, to our task list. That's where it is and okay so this is where we have it this div here but you see we don't even want this div to show every time we only want it to show when there's at least one task i'm sure you get what i'm trying to say so i'll come here and open my curly braces and i'll add a conditional statement i'll say that if tasks dot length is greater than zero in other words if there's at least one task that is in our database then i want to now show all of these guys oh sorry ctrl z i need to have my and and operator so and operator and then i'll now put my markup inside the curly braces so this is what i want to put inside the curly braces i'll cut that ctrl x and then i'll just slot it in here okay so you see what i just did so this is only going to show up this guy here is only going to show up when there's at least one task now for this first one here we want to show the total number of tasks so that's pretty easy you just open your curly braces here and then put in your tasks dot length again let me save that and see if it works immediately aha so you see we already have three here now the last one is the completed task Remember, we created a variable for the completed task or a state. So look at it, completed tasks. But we've not actually done anything with it. So what we want to do is we want to have like a function that will look at the task and find the ones that are completed, if you get what I mean. So I will come just the bottom here. I can do it at the bottom here after my delete task. Yeah, I'll just add a use effect. Let me tap that. I'll just add a use effect. And let's open that up like so. I'll add a comma and open my brackets, uh, my square brackets. So what I want to do is let me create a variable. I'll say const. I'll just call it C task, which stands for completed task. Yeah. And that's going to be equal to I'm going to get the task, the normal task that we have three of them and I'll filter through it. So I will say tasks dot filter and let's open that up. I'll represent every item inside as a single task. 
then let's open that up as well so what i want to do inside of this guy is i want to return all the task dot completed that is equal to true okay so you see what i just did i filtered through the tasks and i'm returning all the task dot completed that is equal to true so now i'll come outside here and then i'll set completed tasks to my c task which is this guy here that i just created now the last piece of um action that we need to do here is that we need to add a dependency array here so that every time our task changes we want this use effect to fire so i'll just come here and add my tasks and that's all so lastly we're just going to come down to our markup which is right here and instead of having zero here we're going to have something dynamic so this is going to be completed task dot length and hopefully we're going to get uh, one completed task so let me save that and let's see okay so i might need to refresh the page aha so you see i refresh the page we have total tax three completed task one so if i make this completed then you see completed task has been set to two total tax is set to three let me add another task task four hit enter and it's going to add that task added successfully okay and apparently i don't think i can see the task on the page so there's something wrong thank god i tested it so let's just make sure that everything is fine with the create task function so oh that's the first function we created that's why so whenever we create a task right we clear the form we also want to call the get tasks function so that it will update the tasks displayed on the page all right so save that and let me just refresh this page and try it one more time okay so you see we have task four so let me add task five task five hit enter aha so you see it works i'm going to delete this task five i'm going to edit task four just to test so task four and updated and then hit enter and then you see it has been updated then let's set one more task to complete and that's correct so everything works fine so at this point i think what we need to do next is to deploy this application to heroku i remember i said that we're going to deploy it in two ways this first project we're going to deploy both the front end and the back end to heroku the second project which is a, a much larger project we're going to deploy the front end to netlify or vercel i've not decided and the back end is going to be deployed on Heroku. So just to show you different ways that you can host your full stack application. All right. Thank you so much. And I'll see you in the next one.